So we thought, oh, we go to Church Boy. We'll go with MC Hammer, but he was the most one of them all. I heard him. Without spending any money, Hammer could have told some people to fuck him up. I know who Hammer was affiliated with, and he wouldn't have to pay to get to tell somebody to fuck somebody up. You know, Hammer was he was a big dog, man. He got respect in the streets. He had, came from a respected crew, and they had a business. Him and his brother Lewis and all, and the crew. They wasn't playing. We was almost boxed in. There's a hit. Rolling 60 Crips, 30,000 members, $50,000, dead. The hip hop industry of Hollywood consists of cutthroat competitions between artists, struggling and striving to climb the stairs of success. I mean, a lot of the news we receive shows tensions and controversies, but there were still some rappers that didn't forget their grassroots, keeping brotherhoods alive. Apparently, MC Hammer and Easy E were among those. They were tough guys you wouldn't mess with, but they maintained their brotherly bond, with Easy showing a healthy dose of respect for Hammer. MC Hammer has talked about his relationship with Easy E in the song he dedicated to his name. It's real when I say I cry, cause I wrote this song from the inside. Easy E, real name, Eric Wright, rose from the streets of Compton to become a hip hop artist, propelling West Coast rap and to rap. One of the most recognizable achievements of E was the formation of the NWA group. Unsurprisingly, he was referred to as the godfather of rap. Life for Eric was not quite a bed of roses. He left school at the age of 10. Reportedly, the young child became a dealer of as he fell into bad company. Eric's work aimed for him to attain fortune, but also provided a means for him to survive on the chaotic streets. Wright's future manager, Jerry Heller, wrote in his memoir that no one survived on the streets without a protective mask. No one survived You had to have a role. You had to be thug, player, athlete, or man. Otherwise, there was only one role left to you, victim. The question stands, why did MC Hammer feel a different and stronger connection with E than his fellow rappers? Well, you need to hold on to your seat. MC Hammer seems to be a gangster himself. His statements in an interview point toward it. While talking with Davey D in 1987, the rapper explained his choice of choosing a particular style for rapping. He stated, when I came up with the idea I wanted to be a rap artist, why didn't I choose the gangster style? Because that was my reality. For MC, he thought being a or having them around you was a problem. And at that time, it was a real issue. The rapper did not want to glorify the idea. Instead, he wanted to rap out the solution. He wanted to find ways to evade that corrupted environment. I didn't need to fantasize about living in a life or living in a environment. It was real. So man, I don't want to rap about that. I want to rap on how to get up out of here. I want to rap about a solution. Hammer and Eric both had similar pasts. They could understand each other's journey, the struggles, the obstacles, and finally, the success. In 1995, Easy es life turned around completely. In a public statement, the rapper stunned the fans by informing them of him getting diagnosed with AIDS. On March 26, the rapper passed away due to AIDS-induced pneumonia. The news of E's passing came as a shock for the fans and his co-artists too who looked upon him as their idol. MC adored E a lot, and that is why he created and dedicated an entire song for him. He wanted to pay his respects and recognize all the favors Easy e did for him in his lifetime. The title of the song is Nothing But Love. This explains MC's true emotions behind the production of the song. His crystal clear intentions of paying tribute to the legend with feelings of love and nothing else. In the introductory lines of the song, the rapper sang, Sometimes you got to be real. It is not common among artists to credit someone else for their successes. Mostly, all the content is based on views and possible profit. But MC understood his need to make this tribute. He knew he had to be real. He had to credit his idol. Further on in the song, the rapper talked about how 31 years was too little for a star like Easy e 31 years got me shared these tears cause it's just too young for a brand. 31 years got me shared these tears cause it's just too young for a brand to be out of here. MC also showed light on how the deceased rapper was overlooked by the viewers and other artists saying a strong voice that they didn't want to hear. However, Hammer assured E, while poetically talking as he continued, but your message lives on. 
strong voice that they didn't want to hear, but your message lives on. The lyric mentioning people unwilling to hear the rapper seems similar to Easy es son's claims, where he dissed Suga Knight for being involved in the death of his father. He believes it's M. Young Easy wrote on his Instagram, I've been known my pops was K. His death never added up to. What PPL have always said maybe they think we're idiots, blind to the truth, IDK? But for you new fans, youngsters, and PPL, who just don't know much, notice in straight out a Compton. Easy did not get sick until after the studio incident with Sujay, and look how he acknowledged and admits on this interview with or Jimmy Kimmel injecting PPL instead of shooting them is a new thing that's done. The truth is out there it's just blinded by the fact that Eric had a lot of S of free, your mind, rip easy, a easy F, Suji, night. Was Hammer hinting at this too? Both of the artists came from the same place in the industry as we already know, and Hammer made sure he didn't miss the part. He rapped about the straight out of Compton singer emerging from the the lanes and how life mistreats people belonging to those areas. He described his curiosity about how the rapper managed to stay strong while having so many stones rolling in his way. The rapper sang about the special moments between him and Easy e He specifically mentioned their meeting in 1991 when E was on a vacation and there he introduced MC Hammer to other artists. Yes, Eric was involved in laying down the foundation steps of MC's ladder. Hammer described how he respects and affectionately treats the family of Eric as though he sees his idol in their body. Throughout the song, the rapper made sure to not make any controversial statements and limit his words to only praise the artist. Most controversies are created and circulated when the other person is not in a position to defend his name. The industry has had rumors about celebrities for decades, and nothing good has ever come out of it. Thus, Hammer requested the media and the public to let the deceased carry on in his journey at peace. In the song, he rapped, It's a shame some of the things I read since my homie is gone, let him rest in peace. It's a shame some of the things I read since my homie is gone, let him rest in peace. The song did not receive tons of listeners and it did not get tons of views, but the number of views cannot judge its importance, but rather its purpose. For many fans who didn't know before, it was quite surprising to witness Hammer's respect and affection towards Easy e as his relationships with other artists have not always been very appreciable. Throughout the rapper's career, he had been reportedly surrounded by and he maintained strong relations with them. That's probably why he felt confident enough to go one-on-one -on -one with other artists in the industry. For instance, he attacked Lil Cool J in his 1987 cut, Let's Get It Started. In the song, Hammer praised himself for being better than his LL Cool J. J couldn't keep his quiet and flamed onto Hammer in his track, Today Break of Dawn, in which he went rapping, You little snake in the grass? You swing hammer, but you couldn't break glass. Gimme a lighter, woof. Now you're cut loose from that Jerry Curl juice. Cool J is back on the map, and when I see you, I'ma give you a slap. That's right, a little kick for that crap, cause my old gym teacher ain't supposed to rap, spit LL on the song. Hammer's diss with Cool led many artists to keep away from him as the rapper went on against one of the most famous ones without any known reason. They thought it was for attention, and if that's the case, who wants that kind of heat? MC Search was one of the rappers that feared MC Hammer. According to the MC, he felt by Hammer. Search has repeatedly claimed that Hammer put out a hit for him over their rivalry on a song lyric that MC Search aired. It was, the cactus turned Hammer's mother out. Now that line, for any MC realized, people realized that we were saying that our album was better than his album. Search revealed in the Ed Lover show that he has been receiving death threats from Hammer's brother. We're in the air, Search says, and Carmen Ashurst Watson, who was the president of Def Jam at the time, picks up the phone and hears someone say, is third bass on their way to LA? And she goes, yeah. And the voice says, good, they're dead. This is Louis Burrell. I believe they identified that the call was from Hammer's brother, Louis Burrell. Search explained his miserable situation by saying, I'm not good, he told Vlad TV in 2018. I've been through 25 years of therapy three days a week. I am not good. I wish I could be good. But when somebody tries to K you over a rap lyric, 
Understand what it feels like to not know that you can turn a corner without someone trying to cull you for $50,000. Redman also made the mistake of dissing Hammer. During an interlude on 1992's What the Album, titled Funky Uncles, the rapper sang, Everybody yelling hammer time, hammer time. He ain't shh, mama ain't shh, daddy ain't shh, ain't nobody s. The artist claimed that after this, he was chased out of Oakland, and he alleged the chasers to be affiliates of Hammer. We had to get the out of here. They weren't playing. We were almost boxed in, he told Vlad TV in 2016. Next in the line, fearing for safety after dissing MC Hammer is Ice Cube. The rapper, in his video for the song True to the Game, showed a rapper dressed up in hardcore clothing who later changed to a red-colored outfit. This portrayed a person crossing over into pop culture. This racied a few eyebrows as it seemed like an attempt to attack MC Hammer, at least the rapper thought so. There follows a reported story that starts from a hotel room where MC was on a call with an informant who disclosed to MC information about ICE's location. The rapper and his entourage hopped in their cars and reached their destination. They managed to catch Ice Cube leaving the establishment. Allegedly, the rapper then started asking Ice Cube questions, even threatening him. Hammer allegedly warned him not to try that again, or he'd face the consequences, a threat Ice Cube was reportedly smart enough to heed to. But despite having strained relations with so many artists in the field, MC Hammer gave respect to Easy e and that respect was reciprocated. While some claim it was likely for clout, many Hammer fans have come out to say the rapper did not do this to gain any advantage from it, that it was solely out of love and nothing but love. Those viewers praised MC Hammer for not going with the culture of rapping about and actually thinking outside the box along with opening doors of opportunities for those around him. One netizen wrote, The love runs deep for MC Hammer. Everyone in the Bay appreciates Hammer. He was good music in a wild era. The 80 were worse. I grew up in Hunter's Point, San Francisco. He showed other rappers that there's more to life than what is outside our door. Hammer made everyone look at what was outside of our door. Some brothers that are not playing. Much love to RBL as well. However, some fans thought Hammer was still attached to his grassroots, and no matter how much he changed his appearance, from inside he will always remain the same. A user commented, I got family from Oakland, and I'll never forget when my cousins first told me, don't get it twisted because of the dancing and the outfits, Hammer is with This was all for today. Thanks for watching.